signals and 34 counts of falsifying business documents. And finally, before we hand back to Nigel in Westminster, more than 2,000 football banning orders have been issued to England fans ahead of Euro 2024, which kicks off in Germany next month. Fans who are banned must hand over their passports for the duration of the tournament. It comes as football-related arrests in England and Wales are at a nine-year high. German police say they are working with British officers to plan for a safe event for supporters. Those are the latest headlines from the newsroom. I'll be back at eight with another update. Until then, you can sign up to GB News Alerts by scanning the code on your screen or go to gbnews.com slash alerts. After the show yesterday evening, Sky News broke a story, a very serious story, that there were Chinese cyber hackers undoubtedly working for, directly or indirectly, the Chinese government, attempting to hack MOD data of up to 270,000 people. They are current serving personnel and veterans from the last few years. They were after their details, including details of their bank accounts. Wow, I thought this is a really big big story. Yet, what do we get from the government today? Repeated attempts to try to play it down. Here was Rishi Sunak earlier on today speaking at the Crystal Palace Academy. Explain why you're not naming China. Then. As I said, the Defence Secretary will be making a full statement to Parliament later today. And more generally, if you look back to our integrated review, I set out a very robust policy towards China, uh, which means that we need to take the powers uh, that which we have done to protect ourselves against the risk that China and other countries pose to us. They are a country with fundamentally different values to ours. They're acting in a way that is more uh, authoritarian at home, assertive abroad. That's why, for example, we blocked Chinese investment into a sense semiconductor semiconductor company uh, last year. Again, that's just one of the numerous actions that we've taken to protect this country. And recently I announced a historic increase in our defence spending. No, Prime Minister, the question wasn't about defence spending. It was about the Chinese government attempting to hack serious details. Um, but I have to tell you, I have no idea what Rishi Sunak's position on China actually is. It seems to move around with the wind. But it's OK, because the Prime Minister assured us that the Defence Secretary, Grant Shapps, would tell us all in the House of Commons this afternoon. This was the work, as I say, of a malign actor who compromised a contractor-run network, entirely separate from the MOD core system. However, as I've said, we cannot at this stage rule out state involvement from elsewhere. Well, it was up to John Healy, the shadow Defence Secretary, Labour, uh, and he did come out with it absolutely clearly. Mr Deputy Speaker, the media have clearly been briefed that China is behind the hack, but the Defence Secretary only tells us about a malign actor. Now, the government rightly has a very rigorous system before official accusations or attributions are made. But if this data breach is found to be carried out by a hostile state, it would represent a very serious threat to our national security. And the government have been warned. The ISC committee confirmed in its China report last year, cyber attacks by hostile states now happen daily, and our wider armed forces community are being targeted. But the committee also found no cross-government China strategy completely inadequate resourcing and defence intelligence with no systematic record of resources focused on China. When you look at the way Grant Shapps dealt with that and the way John Healy dealt with that, is it any wonder that the Labour Party are now more trusted on defence than the Conservatives? Something historically that would have been very difficult to say at any point during my lifetime. So why can't this government be straight with us about China? I want to get your thoughts on it, please. Farage at GB News. Dot com. Well, I'm joined by Serian Duncan-Smith, of course, former leader of the party and MP for Chingford and Woodford <clears throat> Green. Uh, Ian, what is your party's policy on China? Well, first of all, I should state that I am sanctioned by the Chinese government. I know. I, I know your uh, position. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and I've been hacked regularly, and as my organisation, the Interparliamentary Alliance on China. So my view on this is very clearly that I think there is a, a bit of confliction inside the government. <clears throat> I think the Foreign Office is very opposed to taking on China. 
uh, because of business and all the other reasons they give. <clears throat> I think in places like defence, they are wanting to name names and to start squaring up to China on this. So the reality is that our problem starts with the integrated review, which when Rishi Sunak was uh, trying to be prime minister, he said they were a systemic threat. Yep. Agree. When we got the integrated review refreshed, it turned out that they were, in fact, an epoch-defining challenge. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the brilliant thing about it was we were going to meet that challenge with robust pragmatism. Now, that sounds like someone of a scriptwriter of, yes, Prime Minister, <laughs> had got into it the really, policy. Really does. So I've argued endlessly, you have to <clears throat> claim that they are a threat. They are a threat. They know they're a threat. Everybody else knows it. The Americans know they're a threat. Of course. Uh, for some reason. Our think viewers know not, they're a threat. I know. Not the country knows, knows they're a threat. A threat. So I mean, why? they're responsible for COVID. So, you don't get a much bigger threat than that. Why? And I get back to this question that I'm <coughs> going to get to, I think, some very interesting answers yep. um, from the viewers and listeners on. Why can't they be straight with us? Why over this issue? You know, John Healy, I mean, John Healy, very impressive mm -hmm. performance, very, very clear about what the problem was, about the lack of preparedness. Why can't they be straight with us? Well, clearly overnight, somebody from the MOD briefed that they knew that it was more likely than not that it was China. They were the malign actor. Mm -hmm. And then in the morning, uh, the government got worried that that would be done on the basis they don't have the full facts. So... It, it, the truth is, it's almost certainly China. After all, China, uh, I think the FBI described China as having the biggest cyber warfare unit in the world, dwarfing everybody else's, including their own. They are malign. They have a purpose in life, which is to destroy democracy, human rights, and freedom. <clears throat> they are against democracy completely, and they've made it clear from the beginning their purpose in life is to destroy those elements and return the world to autocracy. That is their plan, and we need to take it on. And, you know, I just made the point also um, that it was two years, nearly two years ago, that the, the, the American uh, services told us secretly that they had hacked, China had hacked, the Electoral Commission, and was hacking a large number of MPs. It took us a year and a half to kindly come back to the dispatch box and accept that it was China that did it. And I think the reason why they don't want to do this, because what follows next must be sanctions. Mm. And sanctions Logically. mean you are in a standoff with China. And that has to be the case. America's already in that position. We should be in the same. Well, you're clear, mm -hmm. but your, your party leaders our national leaders are not. Let's have a look at the technical side of this. I'm joined by Professor Kevin Curran, Professor of Cybersecurity at Ulster University and Group Leader for the Cybersecurity and Web Technologies Research Group. Kevin, the company involved, <coughs> SSCL, was named by John Healy in the House of Commons. It seems everything with the MOD, from recruitment to dealing with issues like this, is outsourced. Does that actually make sense or would it just be that the MOD would not have the technical skills to look after this data themselves? It comes down to cost, usually in the end. Of course, organizations <clears throat> outsource, especially something like payroll, because regulations change all the time, tax codes, everything else, and software can, of course, make that easy. The question here is whether the military should outsource, again, to mm. make something, mm. what we would say, maybe cost savings, and of course, the MOD has been on a cost-saving exercise for many years now and removing a lot of the real estate, but also infrastructure as well. So the main question is, can the military, the MOD, follow what is kind of generally taken as, you know, the rules in ordinary leading industries as well? But, of course, I mean, they used to have, of course, all of this in-house as well, but so many systems now are being outsourced again. And, of course, there is so many ways that, into systems again. So there's always a worry about the supply chain, the software supply chain again, being one of the le weakest links whenever it comes to um, of hackers infiltrating infrastructure. The big question, Professor Curran, are there things we can do to stop the Chinese being successful with hacking? Or is it one of those games where technology just keeps moving on and it's difficult to keep ahead of the bad guys? It's always a cat and mouse game, but of course it comes down to resources. But of course the MOD is funded by the taxpayer. So how much, of course, do we associate, you know, how much do we allocate to something again to protect on something? Of course, everyone believes they're secure, but of course it takes months for us to discover if someone is inside a system. And of course we have 
um, as Ian has said again, that the, the Chinese state-sponsored group, the APT31, as we said, we have 100,000 plus hackers here who get up in the morning and <laughs> until they go to bed again, that their mission is to infiltrate the Western systems again and any governments again that they deem worthy of again. So they have allocated huge resources again to doing this again. But they only have to get lucky once as well. The modern systems are incredibly mm. complex again, but we do have auditors, we do have best practice guidelines, of course, and we have to come along later and see, did the third party company again, the SSCL, mm. did they adhere to best practice again? Or, you know, we're, you know, we're, you know, so, so we have ways of being able to do that, of course. But again, it comes down to resources. It comes down to how much yeah. money can we allocate again? Mm. Is it is it cost effective for us? to outsource well, the military payroll and other systems as well, to third parties, well, I, again, yeah. which are headquartered yeah. in different countries. Uh, I am, yeah, I, I worry about this outsourcing. Let's wait and see. There will be an inquiry. Let's hope, uh, Professor Carroll, we get some answers. And thank you for joining us. Ian, again and again, I've talked about Capita on this programme, outsourcing of recruitment for the Army, mm. Navy, Air Force, complete disaster. People, went, people waiting up to six months and giving up the ghost and not bothering. Um, outsourcing does, does worry me greatly. Um, let's finish this and move on to Ukraine. The Chinese embassy have said the so-called cyber attacks by China against the UK are completely fabricated and malicious slanders. We strongly oppose such accusations. China has always firmly fought all forms of cyber attacks according to the law. So there you are, Ian. Wow, what can I say? I'm bowled over. Absolutely. I'm bowled over. <laughs> Quick thought, <clears throat> important. Yep. You're wearing the Ukraine flag. You've been very clear from the start that we should support Ukraine and allow Ukraine to defend herself. Yep. Lord Cameron went a step further than yesterday. 